what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is the real housewives of atlanta season 13 episode 2 so y'all complained last week about the episode being boring honey but um i guess we done jumped into some stuff this week we met the two new ladies and we got a little bit of marlo hampton sprinkled in so and we got the shady kenya so we're gonna go ahead and jump into it we start off with kenya having um, people over to the house um, to share some wine and talk some talk. Now, we meet the new lady. Her name is Latoya. Uh, I don't She's tr Trinidadian, and I really don't know a whole lot more about her. Um, what we do know is that she's coming in, supposedly coming in through Candy, that she's Candy's friend, but Kenya has decided that she's going to be her friend, and she even said, Candy, I'm taking her from you. And I was like, the hell like are we in high school i'm gonna take your friend like you can have more than one friend kenya it's okay it's okay but anyway now latoya seems to be a lot cynthia is not here for her okay cynthia said listen i'm gonna need you to slow your roll i only met you one time and it seems like whatever that first meeting was toya made an impression whether it was good or bad it seemed like she definitely made an impression um, to, you know, these shows, when you're the new girl on the show, a lot of times they feel like they got to come in like a wrecking ball to make their presence known, to cause whatever they need to cause so they can secure their job. And I feel like Latoya is taking that. Now, Latoya is in the process of going through, um, a separation. I feel like Latoya is, um... She's the YouTuber, right? Y'all give me together in the comments. I believe that Latoya is the YouTuber, right? Um, so we have that going on. Um, Cynthia wants to have a wine tasting. She says she's looking at some new wines for the wine cellar. And she wants to have the ladies over to Lake Bailey. And Latoya is all about getting to Lake Bailey. She wants to see it. And she says something about a stream. And Cynthia was like, it's, it's not a river. It's not a stream. It's a, it's a lake. And she said, well, don't you have some lakes around? And I believe Kenya said she reminds us of Portia in her first season. Y'all know what that shade was. I don't even need to go no deeper, okay? Um, Kenya had the nerve to even say that she's a good judge of character. I would beg to differ, Miss Every season, I got me a new man, and I currently have a husband who won't even speak to me. I don't know about you being a good judge of character. I'm just saying, I... I'm just saying. Uh, Portia really, you know, she she really wasn't a lot in this episode either. She um, got out of jail. She's on her way home. We saw her later on in the episode talking to her mom. She's back in town. <clears throat> and really the only interesting thing she said, because the rest of it was just uh, more of, um, you know, telling about her experience and meeting Brianna Teller's mom and what motivated her to do what she was doing and all of that. But we did find out that things are not necessarily rosy between her and, De her and Dennis. She said that, you know, at the beginning of COVID, she said COVID just exasperated the issues that were already there. And things that probably weren't a big deal before, when you get to the point where you can't always, you, when you have to be around each other, they become huge issues. We heard Cynthia talk about it last week when she was talking about, you know, they got to arguing about who didn't wash the sink. I mean, I mean, wash the dishes in the sink, you know, type. And it turned into World War Three, you know, kind of thing. Um, she said that Dennis has his house in the city and he's still kind of going back and forth between his house in the city and there. So I'm not even clear, or I wasn't even clear what the status of their relationship even is. Are they co-parenting? Are they together? Are they taking a break? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. So I'm, I feel like we're going to get more and more out of that as we as we continue to go on. But that was mainly what we saw of Portia um, this episode. Um, Candy, mainly, uh, Candy was mainly limited to, it was Riley's graduation, and she just talked about the, the journey and getting to this point of Riley, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, Riley and her graduating, and just getting to this point of her life. And she talked about her graduation and how different it was. She was already touring, with escape and how they had a show and she had to fly in due to do the graduation and literally she said as soon as they turned her tassel honey she was back out and on a plane and going back to the show and 
she talked about how the girls of the group were mad at her because she almost made them miss the show. Um, but it just seemed like that was something that was important to her to actually walk across the stage, which I can understand. You know, child stars sacrifice a lot. They really do sacrifice a lot. And so I could definitely, definitely respect that. Um, but we saw the COVID graduation, how different it was. Only her and her mom could go. They were limited, so none of the other kids could go. Todd couldn't go. But at the end of the day, the people who mattered could go. I mean, my high school graduation, we were limited to, I think, five people. So, you know, it, it all, you know, it depends on the facility and stuff. But COVID made it, uh, you know, made it different. Todd gave her a wad of money, child. Talking about something, this will get you on your way. I know you got a lot going on. Now, I don't, I didn't, I, I didn't close up on the band. It looked like it might have been 10 bands. I don't know. But I ain't mad at you, Todd. Todd said, I know you wanted it to your cash app, but here, you, you can handle it. So, I appreciate it. I'm sure it was done for the, for the purposes of everybody seeing him give her that money. And I know what y'all gonna say. It was Candy's money. It wasn't Candy's money. It was Todd's money, okay? Todd has earned his own money. Y'all gonna stop coming for Todd. Moving on. Then we got to see Cynthia meeting up with uh, Drew Sador. Drew Sador is another new character. I mean, character, Lord. Another new um, housewife this, this season. Now, Drew Sador is an actress. You may remember that she played uh, t boz in the TLC movie. She's also from the game. If you are like me, you remember her from the game, honey. She broke up, um, you know, um, Derwin and Melanie. Okay, so we we just not filling in. We're going to get to that in a second. But her and Cynthia go out. Um, well, no, before, well, yeah, we saw her and Cynthia meeting up um, for dinner and for wine and everything. And she got a boot on her leg, honey. She tore her Achilles, pulled her Achilles. She did something to her, probably... Um, she probably tore her Achilles or popped her Achilles because she had to have surgery and everything. And she has a boot on her leg. And um, she was just talking about how hard that's been going through COVID and, and all of that. Um, and we found out that she was actually on stage with Leon, Cynthia's ex-husband, um, slash Noelle's daddy. No, I'm sorry, not her ex-husband, Noelle's daddy. That is not, they never got married. Um, and then we fast forwarded it to, I think they said eight hours earlier, we saw Drew at home with her kids. And we met her husband and her mother-in-law. So, I mean, her mother. It's not her mother-in-law. Her mother's a pastor. Now, her mom came down um, to help her after her surgery, and then COVID hit. So, her mother has sort of been stuck in Georgia. And she said that has been very challenging because her mother has a very type A personality and her husband, and that they have actually gone at it, and she's kind of been stuck in the middle. She talked about how her mama didn't walked in on them having sex. And I'm thinking, your mama don't knock? Like, I don't care who house you in. You don't just roll up in people's bedrooms. Especially married people's bedroom. Your mama didn't knock? Okay. Um, but it's their, actually their six-year anniversary. And so, um, he bought her some champagne and bed like mimosa type of thing and roses some beautiful beautiful flowers and so um he's she said he's an entrepreneur in it and so you know they've been married like they've been married they, they've known each other for six and a half years so they only dated for six months she said she met him when she was actually doing press for the tlc movie so that's their little story we're gonna we're gonna get to them later okay we're gonna get to them but her and cynthia continue you know her but um you know, her and Cynthia seem to seem to be having a nice little lunch, and Cynthia definitely seems to be seems to have warmed up to Drew way more than she has warmed up to Latoya. Like she is just not here for Latoya at all. I really don't know all that went down at that situation when Latoya first met them, but whatever it was, Cynthia was just she just wasn't here for it, and she is being very very cautious about you know welcoming her into the fold. I guess for lack of a better word, child. Um, so, we get to Lake Bailey, where Cynthia's having her wine tasting, and these are all wines that she's considering adding to the wine cellar, but they are all by black, um, wineries. And, you know, I'm sort of torn on that mindset, and what I mean by that is this, before y'all get at me, I'm not upset about her wanting to highlight black wineries what i'm upset about is she was like well you know with everything going on with the movement and with the movement and with the movement 
But why did it have to take a movement for you to say, I want to highlight black wineries and black wine companies in my business? And I'm not saying that she's never carried any, okay? But it was just the way she said it. Now, again, I'm not mad at you making a concerted, effort to say i want to make sure that i am highlighting but i don't know y'all maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm being too sensitive or whatever y'all let me know but it just seemed very i don't know and don't get me wrong i think we all are guilty because it takes the reality is it shouldn't but it does it takes effort for us to go out of our way to find black businesses sometimes and it shouldn't because you know and it, but it does. But I also feel like I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just rambling now. But y'all get the point I'm making, right? Am I? Let me know if I'm tripping. Just y'all, let me know if I'm tripping. So the first two to arrive was Cynthia and Latoya. They rode together because, like I said, Cynthia and Latoya really seem to be, you know, clicking. And um, the first thing Latoya gonna say to Cynthia is, "Is that a real plan?" How you walk up in somebody's house and gonna ask him, is that a real plan? First of all, who cares? I mean, like, who, who cares? And second of all, what? Anyway. So, now Cynthia did have them fake grapes on that plate. I don't, I don't know what that was about. But it's whatever, you know. Again, it's, sometimes it's just all about being gracious with your host, too, you know. Um, Miss Marlo Hampton, honey, made, a, made an appearance and immediately... Um, Cynthia starts throwing the shade, honey. And immediately, um, Cynthia, I mean, uh, Kenya starts throwing shade. She starts talking about how Marlo has fallen off. And, you know, of course, you know, shady ass Bravo going to cut to an outfit that Marlo had on that probably wasn't her best look. Okay. Um, now Latoya starts talking about her first car. They, they said something about what was. Um, they were talking about, um, she was saying why Ken, Ken, uh, Candy wasn't there because of the, the graduation. And then for somehow they were saying something about Riley's first car or whatever. And Latoya says, oh, well, my sugar daddy bought my first car. And they were like, what? You got a sugar daddy, sugar daddy. And, um, Latoya was like, yeah, my sugar daddy. She was like, you don't have no sugar daddy talking to, um, Marlo. And Marlo was like, no, Marlo was like, you need to teach me how to get a sugar daddy. Kenya was like, huh? Like, girl... That's all you've been talking about since we known you was your sugar daddy. Marlo said, no, I never said I had a sugar daddy. That's what y'all said. And I just kind of went along with the get along. But I ain't never said nothing about no sugar daddy. I just said I had an older gentleman who took care of me very well. I mean, whatever your definition is. So then the toy starts talking about when she met him while she was stripping. And then she proceeded to get up and demonstrate. And I'm hoping she was playing because those, you was, you would have got kicked out of the paint. For them moves you was putting out there, Latoya. The paint would have kicked you out, okay? Mike is looking around the corner like, what? Who is twerking in my living? It ain't my boo twerking in my living room. Okay. And um, Drew gets there and she comes with her husband and everything. And her husband and Mike seem to have met up and, and, and they, you know, clicked or whatever. And Cynthia was saying, that's a good thing. Because Mike doesn't have a lot of friends in Atlanta. Because, of course, he's out of L.A. So when he comes to visit, he's probably limited to her friend's husband. So she said it's cool that they actually did click. Um, as soon as Drew walks in the door, Latoya and Kenya are throwing shade at her. First, Kenya talking about some, oh, my gosh, a new man. Uh, I mean, uh, a new woman. Uh, uh. But you done latched on to Latoya and she knew. I'm like, what is this? And then Latoya... It's throwing shade. And I'm like, where's all this damn shade coming from? They talking about the cat on her head. They talking about um, that she not cute, but her husband is. They were talking. What else did she say? Every time she tried to talk, Latoya kept cutting her off. I was like, what is all this shade coming from? And then finally, Latoya just came right out and was like, yeah, I don't like you. Latoya was like, I what? Girl, she talking about something because you broke up Melanie and Derwin, so I don't like you. I said. And Drew said, you know what, that happens to me all the time. She was like, especially in the beginning, you know, I've had people roll up on me in public and really wanted to fight me, okay? And I said, all right, I feel like she played it all, but I feel like she really still kind of looking at Drew sideways. And I don't know why, I don't know what, but I still feel like she kind of, you know, playing playing some games. 
Um, but the ladies proceed to have their wine tasting, and I appreciate that Kenya was calling out the names so we could get these names of these wine companies. They should have put it at the bottom, Bravo, um, or something like that. Now, Marlo did kind of um, take a moment when she had Latoya to the side and was like, girl, watch your back. Don't be telling Kenya none of your private business. Like, it's cool to Kiki and Kaka. Shouts out to Jada Nerd. I mean, it's cool to do all of that, but what you, what you need not do, what you don't need to do, what you should not do, and what you need not do is tell her any of your private business that you don't want repeated or shared. Because I'm telling you now, the first thing she gonna do is throw all your business out. Now... While this is going on, the guys are, you know, they off doing their own thing and they talking. And Drew's husband is talking about, you know, how hard. Oh, let me rewind. I knew it was something I forgot to say. When Cynthia and um, Drew were out at um, dinner, wherever they were, she said something about um, that her and her husband have gotten into some heated arguments during quarantine, and sometimes he just leaves for days at a time, and she don't know where he is. Do what? So, when he's talking to Mike, he's talking about the same thing. He's like, yeah, man, you know, sometimes I just gotta go. I just need to get away, for, get some, get away and clear my head or whatever. Now, especially during COVID, I get it. And even not during COVID, sometimes you just need some time to yourself. But what you don't get to do is disappear for two or three days at a time and your wife, significant other, husband or wife, whoever they are, don't know where you are. That's not okay, especially when y'all have kids. Like, it's bad enough if you're single, but certainly when there are kids in the equation. That is not okay. That is not cool. That's no man. Um, and so Mike was saying, listen, you know, I done been married twice already, so clearly... I don't have all of the answers, okay? But, you know, it, it, it gets rough and it is a lot to work through. And sometimes, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. Like, we get it. We understand. You know, um, um, but uh, to me, I was just kind of like, mm, that's just a red flag. Now, while this is going on, the ladies are talking and Latoya is talking about how she's separated. She's going to be separated for years so she can go out and date and do whatever she want to do. And then she'll, you know, get back to get back with her husband on the other end. And Drew was like, that don't even make no sense. Like, if you separated, be separated and get a divorce. Like, if you want to, if you separated because you're trying to work on your marriage to try to work things out, that's one thing. But if you separated with the intent to date other people, then you just need to go on and get you a divorce. Like, that don't even make no sense. Like, that's, 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 that doesn't compute. That don't even connect the dots. Now, Drew says that they separated, but they living in the same house, and he even had her served already. So it sounds like they are sort of working towards divorce, but I don't know. Now, Cynthia had a conversation with um, Kenya off to the side, and Kenya said that she's ready to file, but she's going to do what her husband, I mean, what her lawyer told her to do, which was get the custody situation in order first. And then file for divorce. And she said even she's trying to get a post nup. Now listen, if you think this man is going to be foolish enough to sign a post nup at this point, like, it's different if you get a post nup like, y'all ran off to Vegas, y'all forgot, y'all wasn't thinking about it, and then y'all decided to get a post nup. But when y'all have already not even lived together for damn near a year, do you really think this man about to sign a post nup? Like... I mean, if you really think that you have to worry about protecting your assets. Now, if you if he's not after your assets, of course. But if you already are concerned about him coming after your assets, girl. Girl. He be a fool to sign a, a post nut. But anyway, hope that work out for you. So, we see Drew and her husband having dinner. And it's part of their anniversary weekend. Because it's their whole weekend. They celebrating their whole weekend, honey. He done already made a deal with the mother-in-law. Um... To, to um if 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 he would do the praise and, if they would do praise and worship with her on Sunday he would watch the baby for the weekend I mean watch the kids for the weekends you know um so I was like okay then cool um now they're talking and she brings up the whole you basically you don't get to disappear and go wherever you want to go whenever you want to go and that's not cool like. You disappeared. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know, you know, um, 
you weren't, and then come to find out the man wasn't even in the state of Georgia. He went all the way down to Tampa, and she was like, now, if you wanted to go to the water, there were 5,000 places in between here and Tampa that you could have stopped and got some water. Because, you know, sometimes people need the water. I'm a water person. I need to be by the water at least once a year. I mean, a real beach. I don't mean, I mean, a real, like, immersed in the water. It, it just, it, it sort of resets me. You know what I'm saying? So I get that. But you didn't disappear on your... She said she didn't even know he left the house. She said they had a really bad argument. He went down to his office. She wanted to go take him dinner. And that's when she realized he was no longer in the house. And he didn't come back for three days. And he didn't answer her phone calls. Now, he claimed he answered her text messages. But he didn't answer her phone calls. Now, Drew said that she not stupid and she got her eye out that she know that something ain't good in the sauce. She said she ain't stupid. She she gets it. And I'm like, okay, I'm glad you get it because, boo, it's clear that there's a problem here. Um, then she went on to say, um, this one I don't understand. Okay. So they ended up having a really bad argument. And he became very rude, loud, aggressive, condescending. I didn't even, I didn't like his tone. I really did not like his tone and the way he was talking to her. His tone was very aggressive and very disrespectful in my mind. To the point where she finally, because then she said he had the cameras in the house where he was watching them all weekend while he had disappeared. But he was keeping an eye on what they was doing. And here's my other question. So he left for three days and he didn't have to pack a bag? He had to come upstairs, put, put some drawers, some socks, toiletry kit, and a bag. He literally just walked out the door with his keys and the clothes on his back and was gone for three days. You ain't checked the credit card statement, the transactions at the bank to see where he was spending his money, how much money he was spending. See, to me, like, his first thought would at least, at, at the very least, to the Marshalls. Get some drawers and some socks, some shorts, T-shirt or two. I mean, who does that? Girl, I feel like this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. Anyway, y'all let me know. I done rambled on long enough. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments, peace.